we, there's another uh, proposal that's been developed. Um, you know, Councilman Simpson has worked on this proposal uh, to look at the formation of a nonprofit and how that might uh, impact financially on the operation of the course. Um, Councilman Simpson, do you want to present that? Uh, I would ask our auditor to present that because, you know, he's a third party or whatever, and uh, I might be a little biased. Okay. The, the proposal that you worked on, um, and I helped you put together the format of it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Could you get yeah, closer yes, to the mic? Right up against it. The, uh, the proposal that you're can presenting. You, can you hear him? No. Is that on? Oh, yes, yeah. it's on. Why don't you hold the other one? Okay. The proposal that uh, speak up <laughs> that we worked on, uh, I helped you put this together in a in a presentation right. uh, package. Was what would the effect be if you formed a nonprofit and had a nonprofit operate a golf course, and what would that mean? the The city is obligated um, for one million one fifty five one twenty five for the next four years in debt service payments. That's no matter who does, operates the golf course. The city has made um, the first payment in 2015, which was due January 15th. So $380,000 uh, has already been paid in January of 15. So there's one interest payment left in 15 for $20,962.50. Um, the next three years principal and interest, and that total comes to the one million five fifty five. Uh, you received the printout of what the golf course did in two thousand and fourteen expense wise Correct. without that service, and that was the million seventy one thirty one and fifty four cents. You went through those costs and eliminated six items or, ch or changed six items of costs that the nonprofit uh, in your proposal would not have those expenses to bring the net cost down to 825000 That 825000 was then carried over to the current revenue of $990,000 and for, four, for five years, since the Jaworski proposal was five years, for five That's years right. you used 990000 in revenue, 825 in cost, or produced a $165,000 profit with this nonprofit. You have made the assumption that you would borrow enough money to cover the city's debt service for the next three years and pay completely all the debt service that the city had outstanding, or borrowing three hundred thousand, then one eighty, then two twenty. And that would under this format would be enough to cover the debt service. Again, all these are based on assumptions on um, well, facts are the debt is a fact. Last year's expenses were a fact. The assumptions are what you could reduce expenses by. And the assumption is that the revenue does not change and those expenses don't change over the five-year period. And that a line of credit would be used to help fund what the city needed to cover its debt service, along with any other um, minor capital, not major mm -hmm. capital, minor capital items that need to be done during this period of time. Then at the end of the city's debt, then that nonprofit would pay down its line of credit and operate the golf course uh, theoretically at a profit. I mean, no one knows what that's going to be. But that's what the proposal that you set forth That's entailed. with no F and B in, in there? There's no food and beverage in it at all. So that's None. the cherry on top. If we get a dollar, Whatever we get a you dollar. Is, is additional amount, yes. Okay. Because in this, if the nonprofit were to operate the food and beverage and make $15,000 worth of profit, just to pick right. a number, that $15,000 would go to its bottom line, would reduce the line of credit that would be needed, or be invested more into the golf course, whatever the, the, the <coughs> choice would be. Whatever the nonprofit does, chooses exactly. to do. Mm -hmm. And you have a very similar nonprofit operating the golf course out in a Harbor Township. No. is uh, basically what you're modeling this off of. But uh, under this one, the debt is, is paid by the nonprofit, not paid by the right. taxpayers. The township still pays the debt over okay. in Egg Harbor Township. Correct. Correct. Um, and the, oops, 
I don't understand how the how in the not for profit uh, you do you reduce or eliminate things like water and insurance and payroll and electricity? I'll, 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 I'll explain that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The first item under the nonprofit would be eliminating the management fee. Right now, we pay seventy-five hundred dollars a month to the management fee. That's ninety thousand dollars a year. I'm going to get back to the water bill. Um, the professional fees were uh, Mr. Cerny's law firm, including um, Mr. G um, Galvin, his fee, and Mr. Stephen Kay's fee. We would not have those costs. The one million seventy, where we started out with, that's what actually it cost to run the, run the golf course without any debt service. Ha what happens if you need to pay a lawyer, though? We, we would not be paying them for ongoing negotiations like we've been paying them. You know, thousand dollars, whatever. We've been paying the attorney every time we talk about this on going negotiations with Mr. Jaworski and everything else. His fee is a lot more than a regular business would have took in. His, prof his professional fees of Stephen K, that's a one-time fee, was charged out of that million seventy. Mr. Gavin, it would not be hired again, so his fee would not be in there. Mm -hmm. So the insurance I had to insure, my insurance agent give me a cost of insurance. He said he could save me $8,000. Payroll, there are certain people on payroll that need to take a haircut. No fun protect. Um, so I've, I sat down with Mr. Um, Nathan Robbins and talked about what we could save on payroll, conservatively. $40,000 a year. The electric. The electric would be paid by the food and beverage person, whoever we lease to, hire, or whatever the case may be. For the entire operation? That's not the entire. That, that was for the clubhouse. That was $17,000 okay. we took okay. off there. So that brings, you know, getting back to the water. Mr. Jaworski said he would pay for the water. Under my proposal, I'm paying. Um, the nonprofits paying one million one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars to the taxpayer, to, so their debt service is paid. So Wait, that's pay? why I, under my proposal, I would not want to pay the water bill, you know, because we're just taking it out of one pocket and putting in in the next pocket. We're all the same people. So who would pay the water bill? So the, the city's giving the water to yeah, the cop. So, um, so we cut down the cost of cost of doing business to eight hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Our revenue is nine hundred ninety thousand dollars last year. Shows you a gross profit of one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. As you see in the performer, it does not give increases of nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. It's nine hundred ninety thousand dollars for every year. If I was taking to, this to a bank or Doing a business plan, there would be increases. It would be a million two, million three, million four, and so on. Conservatively, we do nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. Mr. Ga Gavin does said that the golf is flat around here. But so, what about cost of operations? They don't go up. I mean, we at least have two percent inflation, two point five percent inflation nationally. Okay, Joe. Then, if you want to, we want to. You can't have it both ways. You have $990,000. Does that go up? Yes. Does it go down? If it goes down, the cost of, of, cost of doing business will go down. Not necessarily. Mm -mm. If, if you know how to run a business, yeah, it will. Yeah. I love, love well, excuse me, folks. We're not having a debate right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, we're not having a debate about this proposal. We'll have public comment yeah. in just a moment. I mean, moment. if you have 10 employees and you're... And, and you're profit goes down or your income goes down, you eliminate your uh, salaries. 
just like we're talking about in the city. So when the city, when we don't have as many people, Mr. Stinson is working on lowering the cost of doing business in the city of Brigantine. So exactly the same thing. So you would take out the line of credit out of $300,000. You would pay the $20,962, carry it over. You would also pay the $385,000 that the taxpayers is on the hook for. If you had this proposal, we would be paying it. Every taxpayer in here would be paying the 385 plus the 20,000 plus the 381 in year 2017 and 367. I'm trying to give you alternatives to a guaranteed loss of a $1,155,000 to the city of Brigantine for every taxpayer in here. But wait a minute, Joe. If you give it a chance, we've got two years that we have to pay out to, this, to the county every, every time, every year, our tax money. We'd have to pay our fees. We'd have to pay our, our cost of um, our loan, our bond payments. That comes out to $860,000, where we're not receiving anything under Mr. Jaworski's deal. If you give it a chance, if it doesn't work, the worst thing you can do is they put it out for RFP again. That's all you can do. You know, I see people shaking their head and everything like that, and I'm, I'm sure they're, um, you know, they're just one-sided. I'm not trying, it's not going to make a difference to me if Mr. Gavin was running the golf course, Mr. Costello, Mr. Stinson. I'm still going to play golf in there. I'm just trying to save the money to the taxpayers of Brigantine. I'm giving it a chance. That's all I'm trying to do. If it doesn't work, it's not going to cost you anything. You're still going to have to pay the $860,000 no matter what. So, but, but When you have the $300,000, like before you said that, you know, paying the water bill was just taking money from one pocket and put it in the other. That's correct. But with the $300,000, the taxpayers are still ultimately responsible for that. Yeah. Everything, everything comes down, all the risk is still on the back of the taxpayers. Well, you've got a guaranteed loss of a million fifty-six thousand dollars Joe. How's that going how, away? How, how is guaranteeing that money? Well, how's the million from? fifty-six going away? At the end of four years, you're, you're in debt for $700,000 as, as a nonprofit. I'm not talking about a couple of golfers getting together and making this nonprofit up. I'm talking about professional people. Let me ask Mr. Costello so we can put it in perspective. Looking at the two uh, proposals, could uh, the, in terms of revenue from <coughs> Mr. Jaworski and revenue from the nonprofit, how does that impact the debt service payments for the city of Brigantine? Okay. It's, it's rather clear from the Jaworski side that you'll pay all the debt service the taxpayers will pay all the debt service. Guaranteed. You're getting, you're getting basically nothing for Plus the first Plus the taxes two years. for the first two years to the county. Yeah. Plus you're, you're going to pay You're some getting taxes. capital improvements, though. You don't know what they're and going to pay. And $250,000. Can I answer the question? Okay. So the, it's clear from what the proposal from Jaworski is, is that you will pay all the debt service, and the taxpayers will pay the debt service. I mean, that's a given. There's no real question about that. There's no money coming in 15, 16. There's only 50,000 in 17, 100,000 in 18 and 19. And Mr. Simpson did not take the school and the county tax into consideration, which I thought you should, uh, because the same principle with the water on the other side is going from one pocket to another pocket. But realistically, the Jaworski deal should also pay the school and the city taxes, which were not included. If you look at the, the chart, he, Mr. Simpson only wanted to include the county tax as an outlay because that physically had to be a check written to give to the county. The local tax and school tax were not physical checks that had to be written because they're still within the organization per se. But realistically, if the Jaworski lease was in effect, they'd pay all those taxes, not just the county. So the city would get uh, property tax and school tax, but again, it would be the um, kind of putting it from one hand to another hand. 
But if, if these d assumptions don't come to fruition. Oh, okay, let me finish. Uh, okay. Okay, so on the Jorsey side, is it clear that you will pay all the debt service and you're going to receive very little from the proposed lease for the first five years? I think that's pretty obvious, and Mr. Glavin stated that, that there's very minimal amounts that the city's going to get in the Jaworski proposal. Let's forget capital for a second because I, I know that's obviously an important issue. The capital is going to be on both sides. E either side is going to do the capital no matter who it is. Um, the, I think Mr. Sear asked the question, what happens if the sprinkler system goes down and costs a million dollars to fix? Right now, you have a guarantee that 300000 will be paid and you're stuck for $700,000. No. From the way it's written. I mean, that's, that's what no, it's... That's a minimum, he said, he would put well, in. Well, uh, again, you, you don't have the final you know, details. You know what that is. Yeah. But, and it, it, it could be that he'd pay the whole million. I don't know. We, we don't know that right now. But... Leo, wait, I'm still answering Phil's a, question. <laughs> wait a minute. The guy has a, has a contract for the, uh, five years, and you're going to ask him to pay a million two for a water... So that's ridiculous. Come on. That's, you're, that's pie in the sky there. Yeah, well, again, I, I can't answer for what he would right. or wouldn't do. We don't do. know yeah. what he's willing to pay right. anything. As all I know was on the piece of paper so, that the right. proposal. So back to finishing Phil's question is that the, the guaranteed amount that this cost the taxpayers is over a million dollars under the Jaworski proposal. And I don't think anybody can disagree with that, that you still are paying your debt service and you're getting very little back from his lease. Then the other option that... Mr. Simpson's providing is um, to form this organization, run the golf course, and pay back the city its debt service through operations and borrowings. And when the debt service is done, it would pay its debt service off. That's the principle on what his proposal is using. Or e is it a guarantee? Of course it's not a guarantee. Um, what is this it? proposal, pardon me? What is it like? What is in life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, so well, the, the thing is that you know um, that you will pay 400000 in 15 and 16 for debt service for the golf course, and you're going to get nothing for it. So you're out 800 and some thousand dollars in the first two years. That's a given. If this proposal works for a nonprofit, then there's an opportunity to pay all that debt service if this, in fact, did come true. And what if it doesn't come true, though? What, what if, if, doesn't what come if true? the golf industry keeps tanking then you, like it has been? You pay your debt service, like you, you were, would have under the right. Jaworski And then what about, what about the line of credit? Who's responsible for that? The line of credit would be in the nonprofit. That has not been, um, and again, we'll have to talk about for, for, formulating the nonprofit and how that's going to be operated. That there are questions. But, and but the liquor license, where's the liquor license yeah. go between the two? There's, there's a lot of questions. No, but, but what I guess my bottom line question, uh, uh, doesn't, isn't the city the guarantor for any, any debt or anything that the not-for-profit cannot sustain if it fails? Uh, doesn't it land back sister. onto the city's shoulders? It, it's going to be how it's structured. Well, it, well it, no matter how it's structured, a bank or whoever is there is going to want their money from someplace. They can't foreclose on the golf course. No, they cannot. It, so, it, so the not-for-profit will be so a shell. So don't they hmm. come after the city then? I, I imagine they would. I mean, the, Mr. Costello, the, if, if I may, and you may not know this, but the only information which I've been provided to date about a not-for-profit is the two-page summary that you've been talking about. We have not been, I say we, I know I haven't, I'm not sure, I can't speak for the others up here have not been given anything to describe what the proposed structure of the not-for-profit would be. How many people would it be? Who would appoint these people? Would the not-for-profit be covered by things like the prevailing wage law? When they were to do cap with the not-for-profits do capital projects, do they have to bid those projects out? When they're hiring professionals, you know, what are the constraints or restrictions there? We haven't told any of that. So let me just ask you, are you familiar with any of that? Have you had any discussions with anyone about the structure or those kind of issues? That was all part of what tonight was going to be, you know, how to form this and what the setup would be, what would be the restrictions on it. All right, well, Mr. Stenson, do you have the Jaworski deal? The Jaworski deal? 
Jaworski proposal? Yes. The, the one that I included in the bid package? Yeah. Can I, can I have to say, sir? Mr. Costello, if I could just finish my question. Am I right, and if Mr. Cerny wants to jump in, feel free. Am I right that a not-for-profit does not have any independent yeah, capital that it brings to the undertaking? This would be a new entity that would be created to run the golf course. That's correct. And the only money that's going to be available to the not-for-profit for whatever purposes, to cover operating expenses, capital investment, is going to be money that is either generated by ongoing operations at the golf course or money which is borrowed. Yes. And money which is borrowed is in one form or another, whatever the particular structure may be, but that money is guaranteed by the city of Brigantine, right? That's probably true, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, if operating expenses increase and revenues decline, that's more money we would have to borrow to operate and pay our debt. Is that the that's correct? The nonprofit would be borrowing more money. To yes. Operate. So if operating expenses increase, if revenue declines, and golf course revenue has been declining. We've seen a decline right here for the last seven years. So I don't know how you could say you're going to have steady golf revenues. So no matter how, if you have an uh, increase in operating costs and a decline in revenue, it's going to be more money that the taxpayers will be on the hook for. If, you had, if this was an operation for two years and was successful for two years, which is a short window for prediction, $800,000 would be relieved of what the city owed already, with well, only $300,000 being borrowed. Again, it, it's, it's so a proposal. $300,000 to do good. Yeah. But the risk, the risk is still with the city and the taxpayers, all of the risk. And so is the $400,000 a year is a guaranteed amount that you owe. Wait. You, Say that again? You, you owe $400,000 yes. for no, the next Yes, I realize, three but, years. but I mean, it's not a risk. We're responsible for that. Yes. And we've been budgeting this, it in. This is to try but and relieve I, that $400,000 per year. Doesn't make by sense. By borrowing money sense. to pay money that's borrowed. By using the money that's generated from the nonprofit's operations and borrowing money to take all the taxpayers' burden off mm -hmm. over a period of three years, then the nonprofit would pay off its debt over the next whatever many years. It's still functioning. It's not going to just operate for three years and go away unless that's what council decides. 